On this episode of Pedalbox, we're tidying up the wiring, finishing off rebuilding the front of the car and tackling a couple of other little jobs and fitting some new shiny parts. Last episode I installed the oil cooler and fitted this brand new shiny radiator and we've got some new shiny parts to put on this once again. But before I do that I need to fix all of the wiring I slightly heavy handedly went through in the last episode. I pulled off one of the spade connectors, had to cut this wire and broke a couple of earths so I need to fix all of that, wrap it, tidy it and then get on to the new shinies. So this is a new coil pack that we bought quite some time ago, probably in excess of a year when we thought this was the problem for the engine not running properly. And actually, it was the crank position sensor. But we might as well install it along with a new crank position sensor. This is the old one I took off, and I've got a new one to fit, which should be coming soon. Once we get this in, coil pack on, wiring done, we can rebuild the front of the car. Wiring is a long and boring job, chasing and rerouting all of the wires, rewrapping them, and where needed, recrimping the ends on and extending at least one wire so that it would reach its new route. It's not exactly thrilling, but it does have to be done. Yes, the intake's back off again so I can get into this wiring loom because I want to tidy it up. Now this was the one that was in the centre of the fire that we had in episode 4. Oh fire! The loom tape that was on there was pretty crispy and the sparky tape had basically melted so there's gunge all over these. So I've cleaned these off as best I can for now and I'm also undoing a couple of the temporary repairs that we put in then. There's also a bracket I'm going to put back on so I'll get this side cleaned back up and then we can take a look at the other side of the engine and move on again. Well, I didn't expect the wiring to take all day, but it did. I went through everything yesterday, rewrapped and tidied up as much as I possibly could, and even had to pull the radiator and the oil cooler back off so that I could get into some broken wires right down on top of the oil filter housing at the bottom. That was really annoying, and I also broke one wire on this side next to the gearbox that has an impossible to dismantle plug, or at least I couldn't work out how to dismantle it. So that's been put back together with a little bit of hackery, but it's all sealed, it's all nice, and it should work fine. Now I can get on, put everything back in that I had to take out to finish that, and get on with some more actual work. I'm really glad I couldn't refill the oil last episode, and that I didn't put the cooling system back in, otherwise I'd have had to drain both of them back out and refill them again now. I drilled two new holes on the lower oil cooler mounts, as the new radiator was a quarter inch narrower than it was originally advertised. This one's the same as the old one, and the new holes hold it closer up against the radiator. This means there won't be a gap between the two which could disrupt the airflow. Now there were two new shiny parts that I wanted to fit. One is this coil pack, but the other one was a new crank position sensor. Unfortunately, my crank position sensor and the pattern part that I have ordered have completely different plugs. This is the only one that I could find on the website, and the pin spacing is just different enough that they don't fit. I'm going to have to return it, but unfortunately all returns are suspended until after the lockdown, so it's still going to be a while before I hear this run again. On the upside though, that means we can still fit this coil pack, assuming there's nothing completely wrong about this, which I haven't checked, so let's find out together. There's always one bolt, and it's always something that's completely non-standard that you have nothing to repair it with. This is why Allen bolt heads are so universally despised. Unfortunately, I had nothing to replace this with, so I'll have to try and find another one and fit it later. Well, 
that wasn't too painful to deal with. That's the old coal pack out, new one in, and we can start rebuilding the front of the car. Once I've actually had some fun with the car again, I'm going to take the engine and gearbox out and go through the engine bay completely, clean it, and probably end up repainting it. Probably just black, and it'll be cheaper than using the original colour, which is a dark blue metallic that I'll have to get custom mixed. The tidy loom is a welcome change and looks a lot better behind the slam panel. The lights fit back on, making sure left and right are the right way round, and the grille fits back on easily and holds in place despite missing a few clips. Now when I took the bumper off the car it was looking really faded and so is the rest of the bumper level trim on the car. But one thing I was told quite a long time ago was you could use engine oil, or used engine oil specifically, in the carbon deposit would work its way into the plastic and it would turn it black again. And I've tried it here and you can see it actually makes quite a bit of difference. I was a little bit sceptical of this way back when, but as I have no back to black I thought I'd give it a go and I wondered if it would leave an oily residue and actually it's been pretty good. Now I put this on, let it set in the sun, just letting it kind of bake in a little bit, taking off a little bit of excess residue. But if you've got the time, it definitely seems to work and it doesn't leave any oily, horrible goo behind. It's, I'm quite impressed, so I'll probably go around and do the rest to do a lot of the other tidying on the car. One thing missing from episode 44 that I didn't do with these brakes, and that was fill them up. Now there's no point in putting the brake fluid in when you have to take the caliper back off again. And unfortunately, through a little bit of ineptitude on my part when I was cleaning them, I managed to rip the seal that goes on the piston. So I've got a new seal, I'm going to put that back in, but I've got to take the caliper off to do it. Well, that didn't work. When I was cleaning the caliper, I nicked the seal a tiny bit, and I thought maybe I could get away with it. And as the cleaning went on, it got worse and worse, and I clipped it more and more with the wire wheel. Turns out ripping that seal was a massive error. Just getting the seal out was harder than I expected, and as I did, it tore apart into lots of bits. Refitting the new one took nearly half an hour, and this might be the most fiddly job I've ever had to do. Poking the seal under with a pick and not tearing it is really, really difficult, and it took at least two attempts. Well, that's all the golf for now. I can't do anything more until my oil arrives, until I get a new crank position sensor. I think next time I'm going to take the bodywork back and really try and clean it up, do the trim as well as the oil crank position and a couple more little jobs. If you'd like, subscribe to the channel, like and comment on the video. Check out shop.pedalbox.show to see merch, t-shirts and more. And if you'd like to support the channel, check out patreon.com slash pedalboxshow. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.